has handled this incident are the brand advisor and author Simon Middleton and the crisis management specialist Jonathan Hemus. Could they have handled this better, do you think, Jonathan Hemus? Rolls Royce? I think they could have done, yes. I think there's been quite a communication vacuum here, certainly an external communication vacuum. I'm sure behind the scenes Rolls Royce has been talking to its stakeholders, the regulator, its its mm. customers, but as far as the public and the media is concerned, they've been very, very quiet. And I think that's a risky strategy because it allows everybody else to comment on it apart from Rolls-Royce. Simon Middleton, why does a company stay silent in circumstances like this? I think it's because in this case, Rolls-Royce isn't really a consumer facing company. Its audience is not uh, people taking flights. Its audience are the companies who are gonna decide whether to put one of their engines in their aircraft. And I think they're keeping their powder dry, frankly. I think at the, it's three or four days is not a long time in this kind of engineering industry, air, aviation industry. So I would be slightly less critical of them. I think I'm sure they're very busy behind the scenes trying to work out what's going on. But there may come a point when you've got both long-term interests, which are, in, in, you say, in this case, to do with a very limited number of clients. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and there's a broader need in the short term in a crisis. To, to say something that reassures people generally. These things may come into conflict, may they not? And they seem to have done here. Uh, well, I, I, Go on. I think what's interesting is that, of course, all of the um, stakeholders that Simon is talking about and those customers, they read newspapers, they watch television as well. And so, as well as those behind the scenes conversations, I think communication by the media is important too. And I think what's interesting is that Immediately that second statement was issued this afternoon by Rolls-Royce, the share price started to recover. So mm. communication followed by improvement in share that price. That was very noticeable, wasn't it? That's true. That's absolutely true. But there is more to the brand than the share price. The brand value lies in, in, in the decision making of their potential customers and I think that's why I'm you're not I I'm not saying you're wrong at all I in, in any other circumstance with any other consumer facing company I'd agree with Jonathan but I think there are special circumstances here because of the nature of their business so I think the crisis is much more to do with the actuality of it than the way it's communicated actually how is all this changing when you see I mean most of the footage we've seen or much of the most dramatic footage has been shot by people on their mobile phones looking out of the window of the oh, plane yeah, yeah all that fuzzy stuff, the, the in-flight announcement from the captain and so on. This is all quite dramatic. Fair and that changes the game, doesn't it? Yes, I, I would say that the principles of crisis communication remain the same, but the speed at which yeah. organisations need to respond is much, much faster because social media is escalating uh, and driving crises much further afield, much quicker mm. than ever before. So, yes, the need to be able to respond quicker is essential, and that means preparing well beforehand, not waiting until the crisis happens to decide how the organisation is going to respond. Well, you can't decide in advance. It looks as if one of our engines may get into a bit of trouble. Let's have a plan. Can no, you? but you, but you can have a plan as to how to communicate if you suffer a crisis of any kind. Oh, and amazing. frankly, if you are a manufacturer of airline engines, the possibility of there being a problem with one of those mm. engines shouldn't be a surprise. I'm sure it wasn't a surprise to, to, to Rolls-Royce, but having a plan ready and being able to respond quickly is essential for any responsible organisation. we can take it. It was a surprise to Rolls-Royce, you know. <laughs> uh, yes, and actually I'd, I'd agree that it shouldn't have been in the sense that they should plan for crisis, but I think there's more to it than this. It's, the, you know, it's still a crisis, whether or not it's well dealt with by the communications expert or otherwise, and I think it's partly to do with the heightened emotional nature of air travel. Nobody gets on an aeroplane completely neutral in their emotions. It's either exciting or enjoyable or slightly thrilling, but it always had this little thread of anxiety in the back of it because nature says we shouldn't be 35,000 feet in the air. And airline travel is therefore an act of faith. We, none of us understand how these things work, why they're in the air, uh, how the whole system of air travel works. So we get on an aircraft as an act of faith. And I'm, what I'm, I'm more worried, frankly, for the brand reputation of Qantas and the other airlines who've got the Rolls-Royce engines in them than I'm about how the way Rolls-Royce are handling it. Because I think if you were making a decision now about flying on the Airbus A380, which is a very popular aircraft, people are asking to go on it when they're booking their tickets, uh, it's well liked. But would you rather go on one that's got the Rolls-Royce or would you rather go on one that hasn't got the Rolls-Royce engine? And I think that's where there's a real 
interesting brand decision mm. because anxiety plays a big part. That's going to pass though, isn't it? It's like a few years ago, people didn't want to go on aircraft that only had two engines as opposed to four for long, long distance. Nowadays, they do it much more readily. They do, and it will pass as long as the three players involved, in this case, Qantas, Airbus and Rolls-Royce, all are seen to be doing something. But I think where I differ from Jonathan is I don't think it's just to do with the statement that you make on any given day. I think it's in the long, medium to longer term, action has to be seen to be taken. Risk, trust has to be restored in a genuine way. I, I, would, I would agree with that. I think what Rolls-Royce needs to be doing is it needs to be actively sorting the problem operationally but also communicating very effectively too and I'm sure they are resolving operationally they need to get the communication aligned as well okay thank you all very much indeed now the citizens of Burma had the novel experience yesterday of voting